Okay, when we left off, you were being transferred from Alabama out of basic training to North Carolina. So let's right. pick it up there. I checked into another division. It was a training division. We were learning battle tactics and how to how to fight. You know, and uh, the first the first few months were just how to shoot guns and how to stick bayonets and things like that. Now we're going to learn how to fight, how to war. So you mean was, as a the unit or something? Yes, the unit okay. track, tactics. Okay. And uh, oddly enough, the tactics were the same tactics they used in World War One, in the War of, of 1910 when we fought in Cuba. Yeah. And the and Civil Napo War. Napoleonic same, Wars. Yeah, the same tactic is spread out. You run straight in a line at, at the enemy. Uh-huh. Well, anyway... I was in this division just temporarily, maybe a few months, and it was with, uh, up until now, I was with guys my own age. Now, all of a sudden, I was with men in their 30s and 40s, you know. So it was quite a revelation to hear yeah. guys that age whining and <laughs> complaining. And, <laughs> but it was, it was an it was a experience. Well, I was only in there Anyway, we were only there a few months, and then they started taking groups of young guys out of ours and sending them overseas to be replacements to the men that were killed in battle. Now, I have a question. Were these men, whenever they take these groups of men, did they all go to the same place, or no. they take 10, send them well, to Well, we went to the same place? area. We went to Italy, or we went to Japan. You know, we but they didn't all necessarily go to Italy. Or to well, uh, we all went uh, to the same destination, right? But we split after that. Yeah. So anyway, my group, they didn't tell us where we were going, but they sent us, and uh, all of a sudden, I was looking at the coast of Africa going by. Well, wait, let's go back now. You were on a ship, on a troop ship. Yeah. Tell me about that experience. Well, that took about ship. fifteen days. It's a, it's a three-day trip on a boat normally. But it, because we zigzagged all over the place, and it was a, a huge convoy. And you're avoiding U-boats? Is that why yeah, you're zigzagging? Yeah, we were avoiding U-boats, and, okay. and uh, it took our time. And you could, when you get out of we spent a lot of our time on, on deck. And just you could just see nothing but ships from horizon to horizon. And that's a long way out in the ocean. Yeah. To see, you look uh, all the way around you, you see nothing but horizon. What was life on board like? We ate three meals a day and we had entertainment. They actually had guys entertaining us, other soldiers. And what, what did they do? Oh, they mostly played music, hillbilly music. Or were, they, uh, were they guys that were put on the ship or were they weren't actual soldiers? No, they, they were, were just, soldiers. But they, they, were, were, they were just, that was our job to uh -huh. entertain. Right. And uh, it was, it was okay. It was and what good. did you see? What was the what type of entertainment would you see? Cowboy music, right? Yeah, right. Country western. And any comedians? Any? There, may, there were some comedians. I can't remember too much about them. But yeah, they were comedians. And in fact, one guy did a takeoff on Andy Griffith. Griffith. He was just he, he started out being a stand-up comedian. Yeah. You know? And he did that. That uh, thing called uh, what it was was baseball, mm -hmm. and he was describing baseball. It was very funny. Yeah. Well, this guy did that, and he did the football one as well. Yeah, and then we had another guy did a takeoff on uh, the piano player, that Swedish guy. What's his name? Victor Borga. Victor Borga did his with his uh, 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 punctuations, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, that was interesting. It was different things like that. Yeah. But anyway, after 15 days or so, we pulled into, uh, we went to the Gibraltar. We Straight of Gibraltar, 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 right. Landed at Naples, Italy. Wow. And it, the harbor was full of sunken ships. And we actually landed on top of another ship that was sunk. They just built a platform over top of it. And our ship, you know, burst right up against that. We, we walked off of our ship uh, in over top of this sunken hulk, and they built a wooden 
Right. Now, was it sunk because they sunk it on purpose to create like a natural... The Germans sunk it. Oh, okay, so it was just a ship yeah. that got sunk. Okay, or so it may have got sunk by bomb. Yeah. yeah. All right, so you get yeah. off the ship. Now you're in Naples. Now we're in Naples, and then they sent us right to a, to a uh, replacement camp. And the replacement camp was a farm up halfway up the base of Italy uh, called, at a town called Caserta. How far behind the front lines are you at this point? Uh, never more than a couple hundred miles, at the most, hundred miles. Yeah. We, we couldn't hear guns or anything like that. Yeah. Well, all we could hear was air raids, which we got, had every night. You mean the Germans were conducting and air raids? Yeah, they would bomb the harbor regularly. And we would watch the fireworks. How about that? Now, did we have airplanes up there as well no, to just fight them? And aircraft. Oh, so Not we just had to take it. Yeah. So you guys just had to take it. Oh yeah, they didn't get they didn't get much done. The yeah, Germans. They, uh -huh. uh, we'd shoot, shoot their airplanes down quite a bit. Now you're in Naples for in the area. How long before you actually get about set a up? week? And then what? Yeah. They feel like you're you got your yeah. During that time while we were in Naples, I got sick drinking the. Drinking the water, I had to go to the hospital. I had dysentery so bad it almost killed me. And uh, so I spent a week in the hospital mm -hmm. there. This is before you see any action, yeah, right? Yeah, I hadn't even, everybody in the hospital had come over around touching me because I just came from the States. <laughs> Some of those guys were there two or three years ago. Wow. wow. <laughs> and, uh, and the nurses, you know, oh, he just got off the boat. <laughs> yeah. So they were teasing you, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rookie. I suppose you could have applied for a Purple Heart at that point. No, I didn't. Yeah. We had one guy, and it was, I thought this was interesting. When we got off the, our ship, we had to climb down those cargo nets. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a gangplank. We, and they, one of the guys slipped, and he fell, and he hung by his leg, and he broke his leg. Mm -hmm. And he, he went straight to the hospital, never saw a combat. He was in the hospital the rest of the war. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. And when we went when we went home, the following year, he was on our ship. <laughs> so he was just hanging. Yeah, in the we back. saw him. What are you doing? Oh, I just got out of the hospital. <laughs> he missed the whole war. Well, anyway, that took just a yeah. odd oddity. Yeah. So we uh, we went to the replacement camp at Caserta, and, we, and a, a big they had a spread, nice big tanks all over the place, and it was a farm that belonged to. Count Ciano, who was Mussolini's son-in-law, and we got, we took it over and and lived in tents until they called us out. You know, they call every day. They would call out so many guys, and by that time we had just broken out of the Anzio beachhead, and so they put us on trucks, and we had to follow the Fifth Army all the way up. Not too far. We caught them before long. Now, just for clarification, Angio Beachhead was north of Naples, is that right? right? Was, yeah. Okay. Right by Rome. So okay. they just broke out of the, and captured Rome. So we got on trucks and we followed the Fifth Army. We'd stop at night, you know, and camp and eat and stuff. And we finally caught up to them just above Rome and uh, in, a, in a part of the country called Abruzzia. Mm hmm and that's where we, we stayed for a couple of days. And then we'd move closer and move closer. And finally, we, they uh, hit the German resistance up around Florence, Italy. And that's where we caught up to my, my division. I was assigned to the 91st Infantry Division. And uh, they had just gotten into combat a couple months before, so we were all rookies. They already had casualties, so we replaced them. Mm -hmm. And they uh, brought us up on the front line and brought us up to our platoon. And this is your sergeant. Introduced us to everybody. Yeah. And they started, it started to rain. And it never stopped till the war was over. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, what would you say, what time now? Is this, are we still in 43 or we're now in early 44. 44? Okay. Yeah, this was 1944. And... Uh, about September. Now, by the time you get up to your division, are you sleeping in tents or on the oh, ground? Yeah, both. Mostly on the ground. Yeah. And uh, 
But you haven't had a shot fired at you yet. Oh, no. We were, Not yet. No. Then finally, when we, they brought us into our company, and I remember getting close up to where we were going to go, and we started seeing dead guys. Oh, yeah. Americans? Yeah, no, mostly Germans. Germans, okay. They always picked the Americans up first. I see, yeah. The Germans last. And uh, it was an eerie feeling to look over and see a dead guy. Here and I'll there. bet. Yeah. And then we start hearing guns, you know, and cannons. And, well, what do you and, think, what do you feel when you start hearing it? Now you know you're getting close to the real deal. Oh, yeah, deal. you know you're getting there. What does that feel like? No, well, we took an old stride. We were trained. You know. Yeah, you're like 18, 19. It, yeah, now, did 19. it ever feel like an adventure, or was it you knew it was the real deal? Well, we were worried. We were worried. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but nobody was scared. They were just worried, you know. I guess when you're that age, you're not scared of no. anything, I suppose. They had to train pretty well. Yeah. And so they, we, I joined up with my group. The first night, I slept in the rain. They told us we were, we were on a mountainside. We'd just taken this mountain, and we were up there. We were occupying it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember sitting with my sergeant before it got dark. And, he, and we were looking at with binoculars over to the next hill. And we could see the Germans walking around. Wow. Yeah. And uh, anyway, we, we got settled in. Then, then we start moving up. We start getting into some battles, you know. Well, we'll talk about that uh, next, yeah. next uh, episode. Okay. Anyway, that was the story. <laughs>